This is a special presentation from the Valley Storm Team. Hurricane season 2022, your wake-up call. Good evening, and thank you for joining us for Hurricane Season 2022, your wake-up call. I'm meteorologist Brian Hale. And I'm meteorologist Freddie Vela. Together with meteorologist Jim Danner and Chris Ramirez, we actually create the Valley Storm Team, a group of trained meteorologists dedicated to bringing you accurate and up-to-the-minute weather information as it's happening. With hurricane season kicking off, we want to make sure you're prepared with all the information you need in case a storm hits. Both CBS4 and NBC23 are equipped with a barren weather system. This system comes with various models which help us provide you with information about what's going on outside your door. And on top of that, we have the capability to see all parts of the valley with our weather camera system, a network of cameras from South Padre Island all the way to McAllen. Our team has dealt with many storms before, but almost nothing prepares you for going through a hurricane. Thankfully, 2021 left us without one. The 2021 Atlantic hurricane season was the third most active Atlantic hurricane season on record, producing 21 named storms. It was also the second season in a row in which the initial 21 name list of storm names was exhausted. The hurricane season officially begins on June 1st. However, Tropical Storm Anna formed on May 22nd, and the month of June saw a record three named storms. On July 1st, Hurricane Elsa formed, making it the earliest on record that an E named storm had formed. Elsa battered the eastern U.S. and caused an estimated $4 billion in damage. Hurricane Grace intensified to a Category 3 major hurricane before making landfall in the Mexican state of Veracruz. Cruz. Winds increased to Category 4 before landfall in southeastern Louisiana. Later in September, Hurricane Nicholas wobbled along the coast of Texas and Louisiana. While the Rio Grande Valley can go many years without any direct effects from a tropical system, here are the most notable hurricanes. Beulah struck in the September of 1967 with observed winds near 135 miles per hour, along with wind gusts to 100 miles per hour as far inland as far and Edinburgh. Allen made landfall in August of 1980 just north in Kennedy County. Allen was a Category 5 storm just prior to entering the Gulf, but weakened to a Category 3 storm just prior to landfall. Gilbert made landfall in September of 1988, packing 185 mile per hour sustained winds as it crossed Cozumel, then made a return to Category 3 strength before making landfall in Tamaulipas. Brett struck in 1999. It was a dangerous Category 4 storm. Brett weakened slowly while approaching the coast and made landfall on Padre Island in northern Kennedy County. Next was Dolly in July 2008. Dolly's wind and torrential rains caused damage and flooding across the Rio Grande Valley to the tune of over $1 billion, making it the fourth most destructive Texas hurricane on record. Hannah was the most recent hurricane. Of course, we remember that just two years ago in July of 2020. It was also the Atlantic season's first hurricane that year. The storm made landfall along the unpopulated Padre Island National Seashore on the Kennedy County coastline, carrying sustained winds of 90 miles per hour. Scientists at Colorado State University released their first forecast for the upcoming 2022 Atlantic hurricane season in April, while NOAA issued their first hurricane forecast a few days ago. Both forecasts are expecting an above normal season, with CSU expecting 19 named storms, of which nine are forecast to be hurricanes and four reaching major hurricane status of Category 3 or stronger. This forecast is very similar to what we actually experienced in 2021, where we had 21 named storms, of which seven were hurricanes and four were major hurricanes. Although June marks the beginning of the hurricane season, very little activity occurs during the month with an average of one tropical cyclone every two years. Tropical systems usually form in the Gulf of Mexico or off the east coast of the United States. Like June, not much tropical activity occurs during the month of July, but the majority of hurricane seasons see the formation of one tropical cyclone during July. Formation usually occurs in the eastern Caribbean and the northern and eastern parts of the Gulf of Mexico. And decrease in wind shear from July to August contributes to a significant increase of tropical activity. On average, four named tropical storms, including one hurricane, occur between August 30th and the first intense hurricane develops by the 4th of September. The peak of the hurricane season occurs in September with an average of three storms per year. During September, the average Atlantic season features seven named tropical storms, including four hurricanes. Of those, two are major hurricanes. The favorable conditions fa uh, found during the September begin to decrease in October due to increasing wind shear and cooler sea surface temperatures. The focus of formation shifts westward to the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico.
For many, when you hear the word hurricane, the first thing that pops in your mind is your home. Preparing your home is a big deal, and lately it also means big money with price increases on everything from tarps to lumber. Meteorologist Brian Hale shows us how to prepare your home. Before we get to home supplies, let's talk about the king. Yeah, cash. When a hurricane's approaching, get to your local ATM and load up. Now about those supplies. The good news is the supply of supplies you'll need to ready your home for hurricane season is up. While the bad news is prices are up too, way up. George Palacios welcomes customers to his store every hurricane season. Ready to answer questions and get homeowners on the right track. Every year we usually get a pretty good amount of folks coming in on the sometimes last minute or whenever they get those warnings. But uh, hopefully we can get some to come in a little early and get it out of the way. We got a lot of uh, lumber on hand at the moment for them to, to grab. With inflation, everything seems to cost more these days, but lumber continues to be ahead of the price curve. Last year, it was sky high, and this summer, it is forecast to surge again to more than triple what it was back in 2020. Are they going to have a little bit of sticker shock no matter where they go? Oh, definitely. I think they're going to get a little surprise uh, anywhere they go uh, with some prices in the plywood. It's holding pretty steady. Some of it's gone down, sometimes it goes up, but it's just everywhere all over the place right now. Take plywood, for example. It is kind of like the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. You don't want plywood too thin or too thick, but just right. There is definitely a sweet spot. You don't want to go too thin, and you don't want to go uh, do overkill on a, for a window. So I'll probably just recommend going a, a half-inch uh, plywood for, to cover up, board up some windows for a hurricane. Preparing your home with the stuff you buy can be tricky if you haven't done it before. So rather than me trying to cram an hour's worth of how-to information into this story, let me steer you to the place everyone goes for tedious details and tutorials on just about everything. Yes, YouTube is littered with DIY segments to help you prepare your home for hurricane season. Just search Prepare My House for Hurricane Season and voila, you are now a pro. Another way to plan ahead and avoid sitting in the dark is getting a generator. However, generators can be dangerous and even deadly if not used correctly. Remember to never place your generator inside the house or garage as carbon monoxide is a silent killer. Do not connect any cords from the generator to house outlets. If the generator needs to be refueled, wait until it cools down before adding gasoline. Speaking of gas, store it properly and away from flames. And always use grounded cords. For many, generators are not an option. Many may need to seek safety away from their home. Brenda Matuti takes us inside Valley Shelters and what they are doing to prepare. When Mother Nature strikes, you really need to plan today. An evacuation plan may be your only saving grace. We push for people to evacuate. That needs to be the goal. Both Cameron and Hidalgo County are evacuation counties, which means once local leaders get the green light that a severe storm is coming, plans to get people to safety shift and do high gear. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is where I will go. And there's no decision making that we have to do once a storm comes. Many cities near the Gulf, like Port Mansfield and Port Isabel, do not offer shelters, but instead they recommend that you evacuate. Now, the largest shelter in the lower valley is this one right behind me, and it's located at the Los Fresnos United campus. It's built for 200 mile an hour winds. It's self contained so that it's got generator so that they can still have cooling and, and a, during an emergency. But of the more than 420,000 Cameron County residents, city manager Mark Milam says only 800 people fit inside. That's why he says the dome is an option of last resort. It's not a motel type of, of a situation. It is to basically get yourself out of harm's way. The go-to plan needs to be I'm evacuating Cameron County in my area. I'm going to go out to a safe zone. That safe zone could be in Hidalgo County, but Milam recommends folks travel as far as Austin or San Antonio. In Harlingen, the nonprofit Loaves and Fishes plans to open as a temporary shelter, and COVID precautions will be in place. Normally, the shelter houses a maximum of 66 people, but during a major storm, organizers open up that dining hall to make room for more storm refugees. Further west, Mercedes will offer a shelter at the monolithic dome in the heart of the city. We do have cots that are ready to be deployed out on the gym floor. Um, all we ask is for the, the residents to bring either a blanket or a pillow and their medications. The dome is staffed by American Red Cross volunteers who will provide meals and other resources for you. However, due to the pandemic, less than 90 people will be allowed inside. And in years past, even Mercedes residents have struggled to get to the dome due to widespread flooding. This year, though, 
Public Works Director Joaquin Hernandez says new pumps will be used to rid the city of standing water as much as possible. There's going to be one here by the dome to be rerouting that those standing water out of the, the dome area so residents can be able to safely come into the dome. Both Westlico and McAllen plan to also open shelters. City leaders say their plan is to disclose those locations once it's time to open them to the public. During the year, living near the ocean can be exciting and enjoyable, but during hurricane season, all bets are off, and it's Mother Nature who's calling the shots. Most city leaders recommend you create an evacuation plan for your family now, because after all, leaving your home is a small price to pay for your family's safety. We can replace homes, we can replace belongings, but we cannot replace lives, and so that's what we're about. Reporting in the Rio Grande Valley, I'm Brenda Matuti. Many homes and neighborhoods have had to deal with all the water that hurricanes leave behind. Marco Ramirez shows us some valley cities are working to prevent that from happening this season. Our goal is to keep water out of our residents' home. Neighborhoods along Pleasant View Drive in Westlaco are prone to flooding in any rain event. After a major flood in 2018, the city was granted bond approval to build a new drainage project that runs two miles beneath the neighborhoods. It's a project Mayor David Suarez says is long overdue. They put uh, big boxes under, underneath the, the, the street with new uh, strong drains or, or, uh, to, to help alleviate this area. This is one of the areas that flooded real bad in 2018. The project took over a year to complete. It's what it says he is confident flooding won't be a big problem come hurricane season. It got test run here with the uh, Hannah hurricane, mm -hmm. and so we, we, we the design and, and of it, etc., was a, we, we were able to see that it was going to work. It was going to you know help some of the uh, flooding issues. This is one of eight other drainage projects being done across Westlaco. We have the other one painted at uh, my Mayor Pablo Payan Park. We're going to bring down that park to help the, 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 the downtown area flooding. So it's going to retain the water there. Now here in Mercedes, city officials say flooding from any rain event would get up to three feet in streets like this one. But the city is already working on multiple drainage projects to help alleviate that flooding starting this hurricane season. We started focusing on a collaborative effort that involves the drainage district, the irrigation district, the, the city of Mercedes. Mercedes City Manager Alberto Perez says they would rely on portable pumps to help limit flooding. But a team effort between the city and Hidalgo County is now building this 22-acre pond near Caldier Park. Uh, the idea is a detention pond. It holds water for the interim while the water keeps flowing south through the creek. And it allows us the capacity to gather water quickly, get it out of the streets, and keep it out of homes. While these projects are close to completion, the city is also anticipating positive results this hurricane season. For example, the, the uh, Collier Park drainage project it should alleviate flooding within a thousand homes, which is the southwest quadrant of Mercedes. Right. So we're going to see a big improvement. Despite these projects, both Mercedes and Westlaco officials will take extra steps to be prepared. That we're vigilant, that we, we stay alert, that we're, we're still working uh, on design phases. Just because we've started this, this is not the end all. We expect it to continue to do more improvements as with time goes by. In Hidalgo County, I'm Marco Ramirez. Coming up, when a storm hits, shelters remain open for you. What they are doing now to prepare for the hurricane season. When we come back, what is the difference between a watch and a warning? Find out the answer when we return. Hurricane season 2022, your wake-up call, will return after these messages. CBS 4 News, working for you. Hurricane season is here. When a storm is threatening the valley, look to AARP and RGV as a vital resource for our valley's population and their families. AARP and RGV has up-to-the-minute local hurricane information as well as resources and useful information in order to be well prepared. Remember, at AARP and RGV, your salud and well-being are a primary concern now and in the days to come, no matter what age you are. AARP and RGV, juntos, todo es posible. Hey, it's me again. Listen to this. Medicare Part C plans with extra benefits like getting money added back to your Social Security check 
every month may now be available to you in your zip code. Make sure you're not missing out. It's simple. One, call the number on your screen. Two, they'll look up your zip code and see if you're eligible. Three, they'll check for plans with extra benefits like prescriptions, dental coverage, and the benefit that adds money back to your Social Security check every single month. Call now. I call to get everything I deserve. I call to check my zip code for a plan with the benefit that adds money back to my Social Security check. I call to check my zip code. Check your zip code. It could be dynamite. Call now. Call 1-800-410-4564. That's 1-800-410-4564 now. Register on ValleyCentral.com to win your Valley Storm Team Mott's Building Materials Storm Survival Bucket. It contains helpful items to protect your home this hurricane season. Supported by Mott's Building Materials. Thanks for sticking with us. Before the break, we asked you what the difference was between a watch and a warning. Tropical storm and hurricane watches are issued when tropical storm or hurricane force winds are possible, generally within 48 hours. These winds may be accompanied by storm surge, coastal flooding, and or river flooding. Tropical storm and hurricane warnings, though, are issued when tropical storm or hurricane force winds are expected within 36 hours or less. These winds may be accompanied also by storm surge, coastal flooding, and or river flooding. Hurricane preparedness activities become much more difficult once winds reach tropical storm force. Strong winds and heavy rain are two of the reasons why evacuation is needed, but along the coast, storm surge is another reason. So what exactly is storm surge? Well, it's a rise in sea levels due to a cyclone, and this is actually how it works. Now, with the storm offshore, it pulls the water back and pushes it towards the shore with the water rising above its normal tide level. As the storm starts to approach, water levels rise and buildings, well, they actually begin to flood. Now, once the storm actually makes landfall, lower air pressure and strong winds push the water inland. And that, my friends, is when buildings become extremely damaged. So how far into the Rio Grande Valley do we actually need to worry about water moving in? Well, it all depends on the angle and the strength of the storm. Now, water could actually rise three to nine feet above normal tide levels. The water could push in as far as Los Fresnos, Rio Hondo, Port of Brownsville, San Perlita, and Santa Monica. A mandatory evacuation actually may be needed. In fact, I have a map that's actually going to show you how to evacuate if necessary. Remember, heading north along the coast isn't always the safest option. You actually may need to head towards cities like Falfurias or even towards Laredo. Coming up, no home is 100% ready for a storm. So what insurances do you need and when should you get them? We take a look when we return. And here's a little bit of trivia for you. We've heard of 911, but what exactly is reverse 911? Is it A, still 911? B, emergency notifications, C, food delivery, or D, it's not a real number at all. We're going to have that answer when we return. Hurricane season 2022, your wake-up call, will return after these messages. CBS 4 News, working for you. Hurricane season is here. When a storm is threatening the valley, look to AARP and RGV as a vital resource for our valley's population and their families. AARP and RGV has up-to-the-minute local hurricane information as well as resources and useful information in order to be well prepared. Remember, at AARP and RGV, your salud and well-being are a primary concern now and in the days to come, no matter what age you are. AARP and RGV, juntos, todo es posible. We know that you want to be involved in your care because what is most important is what works for your health right now. Finally, there is a health care provider that treats you as part of the team and says... Let's customize it together. 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 You deserve a primary care plan that is built specially for you. Together, we'll build a plan for every stage of your health, making sure you can feel your best. My Care Medical. Quality care that follows you everywhere. Hi, folks. 
Medicare Part C plans with extra benefits like getting money added back to your Social Security check may now be available to you in your zip code. Make sure you're not missing out. It's simple. One, call the number on your screen. Two, they'll look up your zip code and see if you're eligible. Three, they'll check for plans with extra benefits like prescriptions, dental coverage, and the benefit that adds money back to your Social Security check every single month. Call now. I called to get everything I deserve. I called to check my zip code for a plan with a benefit that adds money back to my Social Security check. I called to check my zip code. Millions of people have called the Medicare Coverage Helpline. Call. Check your zip code, see if you're eligible, and get what you deserve. Call now. Call 1-800-604-0796. That's 1-800-604-0796 now. CBS 4 News, working for you. Welcome back to Hurricane Season 2022, your wake-up call. Before the break, we asked you, what is reverse 911? The answer is B, emergency notifications. It is an absolutely free notification program run by Cameron County. Notifications are sent to your phone during storms and any other disaster in the area. You are encouraged to register your phone number and address now at CameronCounty911.com. We can't forget about our four-legged friends. Just as they are also part of our family, we must prepare safety measures for them during hurricane season. In the event of a hurricane or tropical storm threatens the valley, here is a list of tips and measures you should take for your pet. Keep at least seven days worth of food and water prepared and ready to go. All pet medication and vaccine files should also be stored and on standby to take with you. Shelters that do allow pets may not allow unvaccinated animals in. Take the time now to take a new photo of your pet in case they get lost. Also, your animal should have a crate big enough to turn around comfortably in and toys they are familiar with to ease their stress in the event of an evacuation. And don't forget cleaning supplies if they have an accident. Here's a tip. Add cat litter to your hurricane safety checklist as it can be used as a cleaning up product for all unexpected accidents. Picking up the pieces after the storm can be tough, but there are things you need to know when it comes to your insurance. Our Jeremiah Wilcox spoke with agents on what is and what is not covered. The valley is home to sunshine, warm weather, and clear beaches. The beauty of sunshine comes with a price. During hurricane season, when a storm hits, streets and homes are prone to flooding and damage. A little kid having to wade through, you know, floodwaters. Uh, now as an adult, seeing shingles blown off of my roof personally. Jorge Ramirez is a RGB native and insurance agent. He's seeing roofs crushed from high winds and rain, hitting residents hard in their wallets. For many, insurance was their saving grace. Being the valley, we have a lot of wind, so there's a ton of wind claims. The state breaks it up into tiers. This graph showing the closer you live to the coast, the higher the risk for severe wind. But there's differences in policies. As Christine Davis owns First Hometown Insurance in McAllen and works to tailor customers' policies. Some companies won't insure the wind coverage on a home, um, so you have to have a special policy um, by TWIA. When shopping for coverage, there are things you need to know zone is um, everyone lives in a flood zone um, and a lot of people don't realize that home policies your typical home insurance doesn't cover flood you have to have a separate policy for that and when a hurricane comes through it brings lots of rain and rising waters so if you don't have it in place there's a 30-day wait before it goes into place so hurricane season starts on June 1st uh, and people call on June 1st and say, I want flood insurance and they have to wait until July 1st for it to actually go into effect. And when Mother Nature eventually hits, Ramirez says you should follow your claim as soon as possible. Because it's not just you, it's going to be everybody else that was affected in the area. And, you know, if you want to get your claim in, if you want to get in, you know, in a timely manner, you want to make sure that you put that claim in as fast as possible. Reporting in Cameron County, I'm Jeremiah Wilcox. We're always here in the studio to make sure you know what's going on and how you can stay safe. But we also send out reporters to get into the thick of things for an even closer look. That was the case with Chris Jacobs and meteorologist Chris Ramirez during Hurricane Hannah, who reflect on what it was like going through the storm. 
Hey guys, yeah, we're in Port Mansfield, and it was certainly no stranger to any of the damage that we saw from Hurricane Hannah. It was one of the first places to see any of that severe wind damage that we saw in the aftermath of the storm. And, you know, we're kind of here catching up about what we saw from the storm and what we remember. We were basically out here for a number of hours covering that storm. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, we first saw the winds, we saw the rain, we were live here reporting, and we did the Facebook Lives, and of course, we were all drenched as uh, all get out there, but other than that, it's just uh, kind of reminiscing of what happened for the past, uh, during that time, and how the effects of the storm, you know, affected this area. And I think one of the big things, I think the turning point for us was when we were here, we started seeing all the debris started flying. Uh, and, uh, you know, when we had the, the power lines across the roadways, I think that was our cue to like, okay, we need to get out of Port Mansfield <laughs> and head towards Raymondville. And then even then, we still saw horrific effects in Raymondville. We started off in Port Mansfield, we started off here, and then, as you said, it got a little more severe. We went a little further inland towards Raymondville, and that's kind of where the eye of the storm hit us, and people kind of started to come out and about and think, oh, well, the storm's over, but that's not how it works. Right, that's true. Of course, uh, we were, I think we were by the Waterburger in Raymondville, and then we started seeing everybody just kind of come out, and then that's when we were saying, like, okay, we're in the eye. This is not over, mm. and, and sure enough, it's like we, we, we dealt with the first eye wall, which was pretty bad, but then that second eye Eye wall that came through was uh, something that was like, I mean, the winds were more horrific, you know, more severe, more gusty. And I think the, when it really got real for us, when the lights went out and everywhere was dark, and then we started like seeing debris just flying across the roadway. It was, a, it was a driving wind, and when you have that rain with that powerful wind, I think I even mentioned this on one of the live shots, that you know, it, it feels like you're getting hit with needles, just constantly getting hit with needles, and you're trying to focus, and you just, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah, but it just, it's so painful. We really couldn't do our live shots because, you know, the van door was open, so the rain was going sideways where it would just get everything wet, uh, and, you know, that was, uh, that was something that was pretty crazy. Let's go, Chris, get on it. Hurricane Hammer. We ready. Yeah, and I have to give a, a shout out to our, our photo Gage. He doesn't like us talking about him, but when we would go live, he was, to keep the equipment safe, he was actually in the van and the winds were so powerful that he was doing like this gymnastics yeah. where with his foot, he was holding the door open yeah. and he was looking through the, the, the lens of the camera to make sure the live shot looked good. And so it was this really odd situation where you had to kind of just make do. They're always learning experiences. For sure. and, and for us, as well as residents and people who live in Port Mansfield, and we we actually had an opportunity to speak with somebody who was affected severely. Their business was affected by the storm. And we spoke with them right after the storm hit. And then we were able to catch up with them a little bit earlier today. And they basically had this to say about recovery and, and efforts. The cop called us at 6 o'clock that morning and just said, hey, the storm had shifted. Not sure if you know. We know you're new. And uh, you have a choice probably by noon, 1 o'clock would be your latest, that you can either leave. And if the storm gets too bad, you may not have a chance because the water will rise for the bridge. So we just said, well, we have no place else to go and wrote it out. I don't think about it much, I guess. I don't, I'm not like in fear it's going to happen again or kind of one of those things. It is what it is. So if it happens, it happens. Yeah, and that was Amanda Stefan pretty much talking about some of the lessons learned and her strategy going forward, which is, you know, I guess there's only so much you can do, as we often say. Right, and of course, every storm, you're not 100% safe, but you can always do your best to make yourself as safe as possible. We'll certainly keep our eyes to the coast this hurricane season. All right, that is our time for now. We'll send it back to you in the studio. If you missed any of this special or would like to learn more about how you can be prepared for hurricane season, well, visit our website, valleycentral.com. We also have our weather app that you can download for up-to-the-minute weather. Just search for KVEO, download it, and you'll be set. We'd like to thank you for joining us today for hurricane season 2022, your wake-up call. We'd like to thank our title sponsor, AARP, along with McCoys and HEB, who made this special possible. The Valley Storm Team will work hard to make sure you're safe from any storm. But remember, be prepared now, be ready, and stay alert as we enter the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season.